Well, the situation in Kenya uh, with the protests, well, first of all, we'll say that the president of Kenya uh, has long been regarded as a Western uh, client, uh, if not a puppet. Uh, and that's not without reason. Uh, he has uh, regularly uh, ingratiated himself with the West. He has been pursuing uh, economic, uh, neoliberal economic uh, policies within Kenya that have made the lives of the people uh, increasingly miserable. Uh, and so this has resulted, predictably, uh, in protests that, have, that began peacefully and turned violent because of the police. The police uh, shot at uh, peaceful protesters. Uh, now, they're calling for the removal of the president of Kenya, uh, William Ruto. Now, uh, what I would say about uh, that situation is that it's similar to the situation uh, before it in Sudan, and it's similar to the situation before Sudan in Egypt, uh, where the people uh, are protesting against the government uh, for policies that the government is implementing, uh, which the government is held hostage to implement in favor of multinational corporations and uh, international lenders, uh, uh, chief among them the International Monetary Fund. In fact, the bill that uh, stirred the protests in Kenya initially uh, is basically an IMF bill, a structural adjustment reform, an austerity measure uh, that is being demanded by the IMF of the Ruto government. So uh, my opinion, as was my opinion with regards to Sudan, when Sudan, when, when Omar Bashir was being uh, blamed uh, for the economic policies that were the austerity measures, the austerity economic policies, uh, the neoliberal policies that he was implementing uh, under coercion uh, in Sudan, and the protests against Sisi uh, because of the neoliberal policies that he was implementing under coercion, uh, my position has always been uh, that uh, these leaders, these politicians, uh, exist to take the blame for the policies that they're implementing on behalf of private sector power. That's why they exist. That's why I call them effigies. Because they exist to implement the policies that will make them unpopular, and then they'll take the brunt of the unpopularity. They'll take the brunt of public anger. And then they'll be removed, but the policies will remain. Because the source of the policies uh, is the private sector, is the international private sector, it's the OCGFC, it's the uh, Western multinational corporations and lenders, financial institutions, and so forth. Again, uh, specifically, the International Monetary Fund. This is your problem. And now, who is the International Monetary Fund doing uh, what it's doing? Who is it doing it for? It's not doing it for Kenya, we all know that. And it wasn't doing it for Sudan, and it's not doing it for Egypt. So who are they doing it for? And when, it, when you identify who they're doing it for, then those are the uh, uh, private sector players, those are the uh, power brokers, that it, it makes more sense to me uh, that the population should be protesting and should be uh, directing their activism uh, and their opposition uh, towards those actors on the uh, political and economic scene in Kenya. Not the government. Now, I, I'm not... Uh, speaking up in favor of William Ruto, there's a lot of problems with his government, uh, certainly, without question. Just as there were problems with the government of Omar Bashir, and there's certainly a multitude of problems with the government of uh, Abdul Fattah Hassisi. But when you're talking about the, uh, specifically the way that they're managing the economy, you have to understand that they are not the managers of the economy. Their lenders are the managers of the economy, and the, the lenders are managing the economy in such a way as to benefit Western multinational corporations. So, for example, in Kenya, you should look at Coca-Cola, you should look at General Electric, you know, you should look at Standard Chartered, you should look at Barclays Bank, look at uh, Safaricom, Nestle, IBM, and look at Toyota. These are the beneficiaries of the economic policies. These are the beneficiaries of neo, uh, neoliberalism. They're the ones who are holding the government hostage. And they're doing it by means of the IMF. So your, your president, and again, uh, whether it's uh, Kenya or whether it's Sudan or whether it's uh, Egypt or whether it's Pakistan uh, and many other places around the world, and increasingly you can say the same thing about countries in Europe, 
uh, these governments, these politicians, are hostages, and the policies that they're implementing are essentially like when you see uh, a hostage uh, being forced to read a list of demands. You don't get uh, angry at the hostage for the demands that he's making on behalf of the hostage taker. And that's what the government does. That's what your president does. That's what your prime minister is doing. You know, they're just reading the list of demands that they have been told that they must ha uh, that must be met uh, in order for them to uh, not be eliminated. And the one that's going to be eliminated here isn't the president. It's your whole economy. Because the IMF has considerable power uh, to sabotage and cripple your economy if you don't do what they say. That's why it's better for you if you never get involved with them in the first place. And this is why I've said time and time again that it's much better for Muslim countries, for countries in the global south, for countries in Africa, uh, to do business with China, to do business with Russia, uh, while they still can, while those countries are still interested in investing in Africa, in the global south, Latin America, and the Muslim world, and so on, while they still have the money to spend, you ought to take the money from them rather than taking the money from the IMF. Because the IMF and Western lenders generally are not actually interested in you paying them back. They don't want you to pay them back. Because when they loan you money, they're calling it a loan. And you think it's a loan. But what they're actually doing is buying you. So they don't want the money back. They want what they bought, which is your whole country.